I have clicked onto the Global Tropical Overview for February the 8th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos, the thoughts expressed are mine alone, and if you're here looking for local information to you ahead of a tropical cycle and you're in the wrong place, so I just get a big picture of things and I cannot get down to a local level that your local weather office or local emergency management can. So across the tropics today, we have a lot to talk about. Let's jump right into Tropical Cyclone Gabrielle, which was named earlier in the day. And this is a pretty big system as we advertised over the past several days. And we are seeing that turn towards the southeast. So the movement towards Queensland is now done. This trough that we've been talking about over the past several days is now digging in to Australia. You can see that on the uh, water vapor loop here. And this is doing two things. It is, as I said, turning it towards the southeast, but is also allowing a jet streak to form here, which is allowing a good outflow channel to open up on the southern side of the system. And this is what may allow uh, the system to become a significant, strong system in between New Caledonia and Queensland, Australia. And longer term, not really longer term at this point, we're about five days out from it now, this system is expected to become extratropical and could certainly dive into New Zealand where we could have some significant impacts there towards the latter part of the weekend and into early next week. So let's go to the up close view of Gabrielle and comparing to Freddy, this system does look a lot healthier, but it also looks a lot bigger and that's what we've advertised over the past several days. But something I want to point out with all the convection around the system, we have lots of banding type features around that center. And this is better seen in the microwave pass that we got earlier today. Uh, it looks like just about a couple hours ago from the time of this recording. Here we have lots of bands developing around this sort of broad core. And these allow a good moisture transport into the core good inflow and that allows the system to get better organized and we've seen now this system intensify a little bit well an ascat pass this morning did not see all of the storm it's estimated that the storm is about 50 knots uh, which is about 60 miles per hour that's a, a fairly strong tropical storm but i wanted to show this ascat pass just in general as you can see the broad nature of the wind field you can see what i'm highlighting here is 30 knot winds or greater and we have some 40 knot barbs there but that's a pretty broad wind field and that was the main concern for potentially bringing impacts to areas like new caledonia if this system were to take maybe a bit of an easterly track compared to the forecast we might see some impacts though i will admit with the turn right here that kind of solidifies the track of kind of in the middle of between new caledonia and Queensland and that's what the models are generally agreeing on though even with a track like this with a large intensifying tropical cyclone you are not going to ever get away from no impacts in New Caledonia and along a good portion of the Queensland coastline we are going to have a lot of surf issues and in New Caledonia especially notice how the system has a lot more convection on the eastern side we could have some rainfall moving in and some of those showers and thunderstorms moving through could have some gusty winds with them. But here's the GFS model, uh, and from this point on, we're going to be talking about New Zealand impacts. The impacts to New Caledonia and Queensland, Australia are going to be fairly minimal compared to New Zealand. This is by day five a, on the GFS model, and you can see here, the system, that's a pretty strong extra tropical cyclone moving into New Zealand. And what's happening here is this system is tracking towards the southeast with the trough, but there is this ridge here east of New Zealand. And with that ridge there, you cannot just penetrate that ridge and go right through it. You have to follow the flow of that ridge. And this is what the storm is doing on the models. It is turning right into New Zealand. And this could be a nasty start to the week for New Zealand. And I mean, that type of an extra tropical cyclone is no joke. That can be quite windy and quite wet. And for uh, northern New Zealand, that could be a very unwelcome uh, start to the work week. And here's the Bureau of Meteorology forecast on that. Uh, this forecast does not go out to New Zealand, but in New Zealand, again, the main impacts are going to be wind, rainfall, 
and potentially storm surge. I know we don't typically think of storm surge in extratropic cyclones, but we could certainly have that in New Caledonia or New Zealand. I'm sorry. Um, but here's the Bureau of Meteorology forecast expecting a severe tropical cyclone here as it tracks generally again in between New Caledonia and Queensland. You can see this broad wind field never comes ashore onto uh, New Caledonia, but again, some showers and thunderstorms could bring some gusty winds, and you'll also have quite substantial surf conditions ahead of the storm and even around the storm. Uh, but for those in New, New Zealand watching, uh, wondering about what you should do to prepare this, my best advice is to just pay attention to your local weather office in New Zealand. I, I, I've seen that they've been posting about this upcoming system. I'm sure you all, especially in northern New Zealand, are fairly used to strong systems like this down this far south. We do get those, especially in wintertime, uh, but certainly uh, something to pay attention to if you're in New Zealand. Don't brush this off. I mean, that type of a strong extratropical cyclone coming into New Zealand, that could be, uh, like I've said several times, a real nasty start to the work week. Um, but moving along from Gabrielle, that's the main segment of this video, but we're going to quickly talk about Cyclone Freddy and not really much about uh, Invest 94S. This is still likely to develop, I should mention, into the Southwest Indian Ocean, but no land threat on that. But we're going to quickly talk about Cyclone Freddy. This one is also not a land threat, but it's just more of an interesting system to talk about. And you can see on the satellite view, Freddy is still just kind of doing what it was yesterday, blowing up very deep convection over that center of circulation, trying to keep itself alive, despite the easterly shear that is very consistent on uh, going against Freddy. And you can see that better uh, if I highlight this region with my marker, you can see there's some upper level outflow trying to expand eastwards of the system, but it just can't do it. It keeps getting stopped by the shear being brought on by an upper ridge. Now I will say on the western side we are seeing fairly good outflow, uh, and if we look at the uh, microwave pass that came in earlier today, about a few hours ago, we can see right here a fairly formidable core on the northern and eastern side, but notice how on the southern side and eastern or western side we looks to have maybe gotten a little bit of maybe dry air, something may have happened there on the southern side and that is not a formidable core on that side in fact that's open uh, on the southern side and western side um, and i want to point out as well notice I, t I mentioned this yesterday how empty the eastern side of this storm is that just leaves this compact core susceptible to the wind shear that is likely going to be with this system for at least the next four to five days and if freddy was a system like gabrielle where it was much larger it would be able to fight off this shear in all likelihood. But this system is very small, and small systems, as I said yesterday, are very fragile. And that can allow the system to struggle in the face of weaker shear, which the shear right now is fairly weak. It's about 10, 15 knots, maybe a little greater than that. And this has caused the system to halt its intensification. Now, it, it has been steady. I will, I will give it that for credit. It has been very steady with, int with its intensity, and that can be seen here on the Bureau of Meteorology forecast. It's been a steady, severe tropical cyclone over the past several days. Now, here's the forecast as well. They're expecting this to still become a Category 4 at some point over the next several days. And after that, it will uh, generally weaken on this forecast. But the question was, will this system recurve or will it continue into the Southwest Indian Ocean? And it looks like we are likely to see this stay in the Southwest Indian Ocean. This is by day five. And what you notice is there's no real system to pick this up and recurve it. There was a trough here. However, the ridge that was sharing it, as I mentioned, that's going to be around for the next four to five days. You can see that ridge stays south of the system as the trough comes in. So that keeps the system from feeling the influence of this trough and recurving. The GFS was showing this ridge being eastwards, allowing this system to recurve a couple of days ago, but it has since joined the other models in not showing a recurvature. And now we are expecting the system to track into the Southwest Indian Ocean. And look at this, we could have two pretty good systems uh, in Southwest Indian Ocean. Now, in terms of 94S there, uh, we could have 
that's a pretty good outflow channel it looks like there with that trough um so that could allow for some significant intensification there uh thankfully we are not expecting the system at least within the next five days to impact land and it looks like the models are wanting this to potentially weaken as it will be a trough over this region which uh will likely have a wall if you will of shear ahead of 94s uh, and by five days even six days and seven days we may have a very favorable environment for freddy to potentially intensify further in the southwest Indian ocean so as long as especially 94s has been around and 97s and now or well freddy now we are definitely looking at an active period here to continue in the southwest Indian ocean uh, but the good news is to reiterate for both of these systems there are no land threats within the next five days. 94S could get a bit close to Rod Riggs within the next five or six days, but I'll show you this even on the GFS. It is forecast to weaken. Here's by five days. It's now weakening. Uh, this trough here is shearing it and it will probably, in this case, if it's this strong, it would probably, I'd imagine, pick it up and it might get caught underneath this ridge here and take it out to sea. And a similar type thing might occur with Freddy. It might feel the western end of this bridge, track south, and then go out to sea. So it's going to be a very interesting next several days across the entire southern hemisphere. But again, to reiterate, as a little recap, Gabrielle is named and the system is expected to bring some impacts to New Caledonia and Queensland and could bring significant impacts to New Zealand for the latter part of the weekend and into next week. And for Freddy and 94S, there are no land threats, at least in the next five days. And both of them could be strong systems in the southwestern Indian Ocean as we get especially into early next week. But that is all that I have for you all today. If you all are in the path of Gabrielle, stay safe and always listen to your local weather office to all the best information. And I'll have further videos later this week on these systems. So thank you all for watching and I hope you all are doing well.